What is one thing that you're waiting for? Me? I'm waiting for this heat wave to break because wow, it is hot in here right now. Welcome to Coffee and Conversation. Hope you have a nice drink with you and your Bible and maybe your family or friends in a safe, responsible way. Uh, glad that you're joining with us for this time on Wednesday for Coffee and Conversation, a time where we just reflect on Sunday's teaching, on Sunday's message, and think about how we can actually apply it and put it into practice in our everyday lives. Because uh, we want to grow, we want to change and grow deeper in our faith and uh, in our walk with Jesus. Uh, we're in a series on the book of Acts right now. We've just begun it, and we spent this past Sunday looking at the first 11 verses of chapter 1. Uh, the week before was kind of a preliminary look at, from Luke chapter 24. So Acts 1, 1 through 11, Jesus meets with his disciples and he asks them to wait in Jerusalem because he's going to give them power uh, to be his witnesses to the world. And then the disciples watch as he ascends into heaven. So uh, on Sunday, Pastor Warner pointed out three things about these first 11 verses that are important for us. First was the importance of waiting. Second, the importance of being witnesses. And then lastly, the importance of being watchful. So we're gonna provide you three questions based off of those three things, three aspects of this first chapter. Question number one, how does one wait well? How does one wait well? Uh, think of someone who, who know, you know who just is really good at waiting who's really patient, who's just uh, able to wait and, and trust that things are going to turn or, or wait for something to come. Uh, now think of the opposite. Think of someone who just has a really hard time waiting, who, who's just kind of impatient, always just trying to make it happen themselves and, and can't just let it be and, and let it wait. Uh, what does it look like to wait well? And then and, and think about that and how do you actually apply that? How, does, how can you be someone who waits well? Um, who, who doesn't just grow impatient and, and jump ahead, but uh, allows God to work and, and trusts and waits in uh, an active way for God to do what he says he will do. That's question number one. Uh, the second aspect was all about being witnesses. So question number two is this. What tarnishes our witness as Christians? What gets in the way? What, what distorts our, our witness of who Christ is to the world around us? Now, this can be a heavy question. This can be a, 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 you know, a, a one that creates conflict uh, and difficult to answer. But, but let's be humble and honest. What about the way we live our lives? The arguments that we get into, the beliefs we hold. What gets in the way? What tarnishes our witness of who Christ is? Uh, the one who came down to earth, who saved us, who loves us, uh, who redeems us. What gets in the way of that witness? Because it's important uh, that we are witnesses of who Christ is. That's question number two. And finally, question number three. What is one thing you can do to focus more on Jesus? Uh, the last important aspect of this passage was about being watchful. They watched Jesus ascend into heaven, and they're being watchful, awaiting his return. Their focus is on Christ. There's things that can distract us, right? Things that get in our way, that pull our focus, pull our attention. But how can, what, how can we actually be watchful and, and turn our focus on Jesus? What's one thing that you can do this week to help you in that regard? So there's your three questions based off of waiting, witness, and watchfulness. I hope these questions have helped you uh, in your time of personal reflection or discussion as a group. I will see you on Friday for another devotional and then Sunday morning as we continue our series through the book of Acts. <music>